thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. This of learning should be a panacea. Should have the base of Migdash. Everyone should be well. Everyone should be safe. Okay, we're going to start on Vav um, Towards the bottom of the page, six lines from the bottom, it says, Loi Rabbi Yaisi. Okay, now I'll go back. I'll, we'll explain what, what's going on here. <coughs> so um, we learned from a Pasuk that yeah, we learned from the word Aleha that only if there's one prohibition there, the prohibition of Eish, of Eishasa, the brother's wife, the person's not, not allowed to marry his sister, but if the brother dies, he's allowed to marry her. However, if there's any other prohibition, for example, his wife, his own wife, is a sister of his brother's wife, of his sister-in-law. So that's called a chay sister. So then that would be prohibited. Or during, if it's his daughter. During her, during her lifetime, right? Yeah, while she's alive. That's right, that's right, right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's an important uh, detail. If his wife is still alive. Um, or let's say his brother's wife is his daughter. You know, that would be uh, his, his um, basically his daughter married her uncle. So then he can't do yibam on his, on his daughter. He can't marry his daughter. So Aleha tells me that I could have thought it would have been permissible. The Torah says that it's forbidden if there's another prohibition. The only problem is, is that why would I have thought that it should have been permissible? There's a, there's a prohibition there. So we said, well, nasei is doicha leisase. The say of yibam maybe could push off the negative prohibition of the forbidden relations of, the, of that close relative. So the Gemara says, but I say is only a regular Laisa say, but this is a very serious Laisa say. This is a Laisa say that Sheesh Bakaris. These are more serious Laisa says. How do I know that a positive prohibition would have pushed off one of those? So that's what we're looking for over here. So we gave um, several options yesterday. Maybe we'll learn from the Kibbadavaim. We could have thought could push off could push off Shabbos. We said that it doesn't. So maybe building the base of Migdash. The last attempt that we had, we tried to say that maybe we should have capital punishments on Shabbos. Pasuk says on Shabbos, uh, that uh, you cannot let it be Mechal Shabbos. Maybe that's only talking about other Malachas. But when it comes to capital punishment, you're supposed to do that on Shabbos. You're supposed to burn, what's the capital punishment? Sreifa, let's say. The person gets burnt. Um, how does it, they burn him, they boil lead and they... Uh... So maybe you're supposed to do, if the verdict comes out on Shabbos, maybe you're supposed to burn him on, on Shabbos. So the Pasuk says, Now, Meshveseichem is not, wasn't necessary. Meshveseichem, me, is usually for a mitzvah that's noyeg in Eretz Yisrael. But Shabbos is a chayvah saguf, it's noyeg everywhere. So what are you telling me, Moshe Seichem? So the Gemara learns that Moshe Seichem by Shabbos and Moshe Seichem on Leis Baruesh, don't make a fire, b'chol Moshe Seichem. And Moshe Seichem, that it says that you should carry out judgments, is telling me that just like uh, the carry on, carrying out of judgments is in Bezdin, also, Bechol Meshvei Seichem, Leisav Aroesh is in Bezdin, also you're not allowed to do capital punishment on Shabbos. You can't burn a fire on Shabbos, even though it's to fulfill the rule of, of, um, of carrying out the justice. Okay, now, what do we see from that? We see that I could have thought, if not the Pasuk of Leisav Aroesh, Bechol Meshvei Seichem, Yom Shabbos, that the assay of carrying out the judgment would push off the negative prohibition of, 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 uh, of Shabbos. What type of negative prohibition is Shabbos? It's a lav sheish bakaris. Assay is daicha, alaysa say sheish bakaris. This seemed to be a good answer. So, oh, oh, one second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Problem is that lace of 
the Gemara had a problem with. Why, why do I need a special Pasuk for Lace of Arawais? I have 39 Malachas. Why do you have to tell me that you can't burn a fire? One of the Malachas of Shabbos, one of the 39, is don't make a fire. So why do I have a special Pasuk for making a fire that is prohibited? So it's Machlech Shib Nassan and Rabbi Yasef. Reb Nassan says that it's Lechalek. If not for this one individual Pasuk, I would have thought that I need to violate all 39 Malachas in order to violate Shabbos. I have to do all 39. It would be a very busy uh, Shabbos getting that done. But, um, <laughs> um, but Reb Yasi says that it's Lechalek. It, it's not Lechalek. That it's Lelav Yatsis. Reb Yasi holds that burning a fire is more lenient than the other ones. So when would this be approved? Only if we're following the opinion of Rav Nassim that holds that Shabbos is really, burning a fire is really an Issacharis. Why does he have to tell me that you can't burn a fire on Shabbos? It's one of the 39 malachas. Well, it's coming to divide up all 39 into, into individual malachas. But if I follow Rabbi Yaisi, then it's only a lav. So I'm back to where we started with yesterday. That I say is they say, fine. We see that you can have titus that are shatnas, but an as, but a leisa say sheish bakaris, a very serious negative prohibition, a positive command is not going to push off. So the Gemara says like this: You wanted to say that it's Reb, that it's Reb Nassan, and then you're going to have a proof. You know what? Loy, it's not talking about Reb Nassan, it's Reb Yaisi. And we're dealing with the lav sheyem by karis. Why? Because it's burning a fire, and a fire on Shabbos is not as strict as the other malachas of Shabbos. Fire is more lenient. The Gemara now says, one second, I have a way out of this as well. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's a. It's a, only a regular lav that incurs malchus, not karis. So the Gemara says, one second, I can resolve this as well. Even if you want to tell me that it's Rabbi Yaisi, that's making this limud, that you don't, um, you don't administer capital punishment on Shabbos based on a Pasuk. Because I could have thought that you do. Because I say, as they have say, but that's only a regular Laisa say. But nevertheless, now the Gemara is saying that really it's, it's, a, it's more strict. Why? And, and it's a bigger chedesh. Because even if you want to say it's Rabbi Yaisi, when does Rabbi Yaisi say that Havara, making a fire, is not as strict as the other 39 malachas? That's only if it's a regular fire. Havara the best in Bishop Psila, who Psila means a wick. But over here, what it means is that when the Bezdin makes the fire to, to administer capital punishment, what are they, what are they, uh, what's the fire doing? The fire is melting lead and they're gonna pour the lead in the person's throat. That's how, that's how the capital punishment was done for Shreifa. So they're cooking. So this is, uh, people don't realize this, but in the 39 Malachas, one Malacha is making a fire and there's another Malacha to cook. So, I know that Reb has, has a lenient view on making a fire, but he doesn't have a lenient view in cooking. So it's still going to be, I still had a Havamina that on Shabbos, I should carry out capital punishment, even though it's a lav shish because it's cooking. Even if you tell me that Reb is lenient about the fire, but it's cooking, he's not lenient about that. It's a lav shish because, and I had a Havamina, I had an initial thought that, that capital punishment would push off a, a lav shish bakaris until the can't they do that public. before Shabbos? I'm sorry, can't they, can't they start? I mean, it probably takes a long time to melt lead, right? Maybe it would even start before Shabbos or something like that. Or do they have to really start? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, No, but I don't think I think you still have to base them and decide that he's Bukhal Shabbos and you might see me on right. in other words have to do after yeah. Shabbos. I think what the Gemara's assumption is is that they didn't have fires burning, right. melting lead constantly in case someone, you know. 
you know, they would get it started right then. That's, I think that's, that's the assumption, but you do have a point. Theoretically, you could have done this. That's if you did it the week before. If you, if you would do Chal Shabbos last week, right. you would wait a whole week to, to do capital punishment on Shabbos. The right. whole day gets because he did it on Shabbos. And that's when it started to uh -huh. require. But, but there would be other problems based on the process of certain things happening. Right. And you're not allowed to do Mishpat on Shabbos. Yeah. So it, you would have to work this out that the din started beforehand. It started beforehand, and it must have been. It was concluded on on Friday, and the first time to do the capital punishment would have been on You'd have to work out the mishpat issue. This is very decent. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. The Amar Rav Sheshes and Rav Sheshes and Mali Bishul Psila Mali Bishul Samanim. What's the difference? What you cook if you cook lead? Or if you cook uh, spices, the spices really means the, the herbs that were used to dye the, the cloth in the Mishka, and that was the cooking and, uh, and uh, the, the origin of the prohibition of cooking on Shabbos. Okay, so this seems to be a good answer. However, Amar Avsimi Barashi, Haitana Lemishim Dasi Asei Vedachi Leisa Sei, Elamishim Demaisimi Kalvachaymer. Rav Shesha, um, sorry, not Rav Shesha, Rav Simi Barashi comes along and says, we got it wrong. You were thinking that the brysa that we quoted, we're going to have to like go through the details of the brysa. I'll go it over in a moment, those details. But the brysa that we quoted that said that we could have thought that capital punishment is administered on Shabbos. You thought that that was all based on a seidah chalaisa say, it's not true. It's really because of a kalvachayma. We never thought that a say is daichalaisa say sheish pakaris. That was never entered our mind. Why did we think that there was a possibility of, of capital punishment on Shabbos? We thought that capital punish, punish, punishment pushes off Shabbos because of a say not because of a say daichalaisa, because we have a kalvachimer that it pushes off Shabbos. Forget about positive command. In other words, we wanted to, to get the rule of a positive command pushing off a negative command and then pull that over to Yibam that the positive command of Yibam should push off the negative prohibitions of the, of the forbidden relations of the close relatives, you're not gonna be able to do that because this is a special law that would apply to administering capital punishment on Shabbos. It's a Kalvachimah that we have that capital punishment should push off Shabbos. Forget about the Seyed HaChalei Kamar, And this is what it means to say. Now, what the Gemara is doing right now is the Gemara is going to go through um, the wording, good morning, the wording of the Brisa. Yeah. Let me go it over outside, um, what the Brisa says, just so you'll have this, because we're going to go back to it. It says like this, that a, a, a student said in the name of Rabbi Shmuel, after discussing why does he need to say he says that the Pasuk says if there's a, a punishment on a person to be put to death, capital punishment. I could have thought that you put him to death, whether it's weekday, whether it's Shabbos. Problem is, it says you're not allowed to violate Shabbos. It says that's only for other malachas. But capital punishment you can do on Shabbos. Then the Bryce continues. It says, or maybe not. Maybe capital punishment is also forbidden on Shabbos. So then what do I do with the Pasuk that says the person should be put to death? It says, oh, that's talking about the weekday. And then it says, or maybe it's not like that. A second, or maybe. Wow. The first or maybe was, or maybe. Are you in Duff sign? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're about to go to Duff sign. First, yeah. or maybe was. I can't do capital punishment on Shabbos. So then what do I do with the, the verse that says you have to do capital punishment? That's only on the weekday. Then it says, or maybe I do do capital punishment on Shabbos. And then the Pasuk says, no, you don't. So we, the Gemara is going to have to go through this. But as we start it now, we have to readjust this to a Kavachimer. And as we thought that the or maybe was, or maybe I'll say, I'm just going to go through this in a minute. Maybe I say, I say, as they say, we say no. 
go back and forth and we have a pasuk. Now we're going to do this with the kavachim. Goes like this. Vahachi kamar. Mani makai mechalem isyumas. How do I fulfill the verse that anyone that violates Shabbos is put to death? Bashar malachas. That's only other malachas. Chutzmi misus bezdin. But not if someone is capital, has capital punishment. That you do perform on Shabbos. Aval misus bezdin dachi Shabbos mi kalvachimer. Mrs. Bestin really will push, push off Shabbos because there's a Kalvachimer. You see, what's happening here is that the, there's a Brysa that's sort of like notes. And what the Gemara is doing is it's going into the notes and it's looking at what was the logic of this line and what was the logic of that line. As it's like a shorthand note. So we're going back into it. It says, well, what, what was behind this line that says that capital punishment maybe should be performed on Shabbos, was a kal- the person was thinking that there's a Kalvachomer that would prove this. But you, and now we have to go through, what was he thinking? You can't apply this Kalvachomer with to yesterday. No, but with Kippur Abba M. Right, right, Kal- right. Shabbos, right. Kal- That's the idea. That this right. Kalvachomer would understand. only work for this and it won't teach me anything else. Kal- think. Is that no. Not the idea? That would only be if it was an Asay Dei say. If it's ah, a positive yeah, yeah, yeah. command pushing off a negative command, then I could have discussed is it only a simple negative command or is the push off even a negative command that has karis? Yeah. But over here we're dealing with the Kavachimer. We lose everything. We lose all our uh, all the relevance to Yavamas. What's the Kavachimer? Ma Avayda Shichamur Avadecha Shabbos. Avayda is very strict. It's very powerful. It pushes off Shabbos. How do you know that? Well, you bring Kurbanas on Shabbos. Right? Avayda. Avayda in the base of English. You bring Kabbalah on Shams. See, it's more stricter than Shams. Ritzicha daicha isai. But nevertheless, if someone is deserving capital punishment and he's a Kayan and he runs to the Mizbeach to do an Avaida, you remove him from the Mizbeach. The Mizbeach doesn't protect him. You take him off the Mizbeach. That means that Avaida pushes off Shams. Capital punishment pushes off Avaida. So if I set this up like this, if Shabbos on the bottom, I have the powerful one is Avaida pushes off Shabbos, right? Here's Shabbos, Avaida pushes off Shabbos. And then I have Ritzicha, or um, capital punishment, pushes off Avaida. So for sure, Ritzicha pushes off Shabbos. Shabbos gets pushed off. So, um, uh, as it says, It's so clear. Such a great Kalvachim. It's a perfect Kalvachim. Avaida pushes off Shabbos. Ritzicha pushes off Avaida. So, Ritzicha pushes off Shabbos. Capital punishment should be done on Shabbos. You take him off the Mizbeah. Forget about, it just has to do with and that was the logic of the Brysa. And I need a special Pasuk to tell me that you don't do a capital punishment on Shabbos. The Gemara now asks... That's that right? Cohen, right? Yeah, it would only be if it's a Kayan, but that was the, that's what the Brysa is teaching me, is that if it would have been a Kayan, uh, based like, on the Kavachimer of the Kayan, that's what it is. But then you take out that Kohen, and then another Kohen does the Avodah. The Avodah doesn't get pushed off. Uh-huh. I guess that little delay. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's not so simple. Truth is that if he, Rashi points this out, is that if he's actually already started the Avaida, then you don't. It's only before he started. If he started, what was it in Tanakh? Someone ran to the Mizbeh. What was it? By someone, someone by Shlaima, by David? Yoav, right? By, Yoav. Was it by Yoav? Yoav? Yoav himself, right? He, he ran to the Mizbeh and someone ran up to Noah. That's by Shlaima. Uh, Shlaima yeah. had instructions or something from David to do, to to make sure Yoyev uh, doesn't uh, have a normal death or something, right? Okay. And over there, I think it actually talks about if he started the Avaida, if he didn't start the Avaida, there's a discussion in the commentaries there. Yeah, okay. So now we have to go back because the Gemara had some logic. The, uh, the Brysa said, or maybe not, or maybe Shabbos doesn't, or, or maybe capital punishment is not performed on Shabbos. When the Bryce said, or maybe not, 
you have such a strong Kalvachimer. What was the logic behind, or maybe not, maybe you can't do capital punishment on Shabbos. Gemara says, Hachi Kamer. We have a problem with the Kalvachimer. And this was what was going through the author of the Bryce's mind, the Talmud Echad. It said the name of Rabbi Shmuel. Um, this was what was going through his mind. It says, Hachi Kamer. Kvuras mei smitz v'techiyach. The burial of a mei smitz, of a, if a, a body is found uh, that doesn't, uh, wasn't buried. <laughs> so, shedoicha es avayda. That pushes off avayda. So that's the highest. That seems to be the highest. Ve'ina doicha Shabbos. But nevertheless, it doesn't push off Shabbos. Sounds like Shabbos is higher than that. So it's not a clear linear. So now, high. yeah. That we used to think that Shabbos was the easiest to push off. Shabbos was the easiest to push off. You know what? Avaida pushes off Shabbos. And Ritzicha pushes off Avaida. So for sure Ritzicha pushes off Shabbos. For sure we can do capital punishment. Now we're saying it's not so true. Because, because Kuras Meis Mitzvah pushes off Avaida. You, if your person was going to Shech discover Pesach or something and he finds a dead body that he needs to bury, we have a Pasuk, we learned from a Pasuk that tells us that he buries the body first, pushes off the, that of that carbon. Okay, so it's stricter than Avaida. It's stricter than Avaida, then probably it's stricter than Shabbos, according to our Kalvachim. Yeah. The Gemara says, no, it's not stricter than Shabbos. The Eindaycha says Shabbos, you can't bury a body on Shabbos. Uh-huh. You can't bury someone on Shabbos? No. Even for a Mace Yeah. You have to wait till after Shabbos. So you see what happened now? You thought that if it pushes off Avaida, then for sure it pushes off Shabbos. But now we're seeing that it's not true. Pushing off Avaida does not mean that it pushes off Shabbos. So back to capital punishment, Ritzicha, just because it pushes off Avaida, that doesn't mean it pushes off Shabbos. I, you see, because I have another uh, uh, um, uh, precedent of something else, that pushes off Avaida and doesn't push off Shabbos. It could be Ritzicha also pushes off Avaida. You take him off the Mizbeach, but that doesn't mean you do it on Shabbos. Of course, Mesa mm-hmm. is not done on Shabbos. Hadar Amar, that was the Oyeinai. Now we go to the second Oyeinai. Oyeinai, now we says, the Gemara, the Bryce said, Oyeinai, feel it Shabbos. Maybe you do do it on Shabbos. Hadar Amar, then it goes back and says, Kvurs Mesa Mitzvah, Titzcha Shabbos, Mikal Vachaymer. Gemara says, well, how do you know that burying the dead doesn't push off Shabbos? Maybe it does push off Shabbos. And let's go back and rethink this whole halacha. We'll go like this. When it came to Avaida doing the work on the base of Mikdash service, offering sacrifices, it does push off Shabbos. Yeah. Burying the dead pushes off Avaida. We learn that from the word Balachaisa. Um, yeah, we're going to lose the train of thought, but uh, let me just explain this. What happened is, um, it says by the Nazir, a Nazir doesn't become tummy to his close relatives, similar to a Kain Gadol, right? A Nazir is not allowed to drink wine, he can't cut his hair, he can't become tummy either. The Pasuk says he doesn't become tummy to his close relatives. He says, why do you have to tell me he doesn't come to me? He's already told me he doesn't become tummy. He's not allowed to become tummy. He says, well, each one is teaching me something else. It says to the close relative, he doesn't become tummy, but he becomes tummy to a May Smithsworth. That's for the father and then the mother. And then the, it lists all the relatives. It goes through each one. It says, well, why do you need so many times to tell me that he becomes tummy to a May Smithsworth? So it says, that, it's, that each one is coming to teach me something else. So from the word Balachaisai, it teaches me that he doesn't become to, coming to his sister, but he does become Tamei if it's a Mes Mitzvah. Um, that a Kayan, forget about the Nazar, that a, that a Kayan becomes Tamei for a Mes Mitzvah. Or even if he was going to perform the carbon Pesach, that's what it's telling me. That even if it's going to perform the carbon Pesach, um, 
even if he's going to perform the carbon Pesach, which means that it's going to be pushing off the Avaida, the Mesh Mitzvah pushes off Avaida. Okay, that's what we're learning. So we bring this in now. We wanted to say maybe, maybe we should learn that you should do Kvuras Mesh Mitzvah on, on Shabbos. How, would you, how do you get to that? We say like this, that if Kvuras uh, if I does like Shabbos, okay, good. And Kvuras Meis Mitzvah is like How do you know that from a Chaysay? Because you don't go to bring the carbon Pesach. So I have Shabbos is being pushed off. I have because of Avaida. I have Kvuras Meis Mitzvah that's pushing off Avaida. So Shabbos and Nitzchas Mepnei Avaida. If Shabbos is pushed off from Avaida. In a din should take worse mace with today, Chaisa. So should Kvurs Mace with for sure not push it off? So Talmud Laimar Lai Savaro. Pasik tells me no. That the whole this whole um this whole logic, this whole Kavachemer doesn't work. Because if I can't put do capital punishment on Shabbos, then it's gonna everything's going to fall down. All of this whole Kalva Chaimer is going to, going to fall off. Because I had a Kalva Chaimer that I should be able to do capital punishment on Shabbos based on uh, Avaida pushing off Shabbos and capital punishment pushing off Avaida. The Pasuk tells me you can't do that. So that would also tell me that Kvaris Mesmitsa doesn't push off. Okay. Doesn't push off Shabbos. That's our answer. The Gemara is finished. We wanted to say that we have a source that a say is like a say sheish bakaris a positive command pushes off a negative command and therefore we needed the the word aleha turns out that that whole source is not here because it turned into a kalvachimer okay now this seems like just for kicks the gemara now says well what were you thinking in the before you had this how did you want to work this out i know it's not true but how did you want to uh, how what was your uh, what was you having me now? How are you going to work this out if you didn't do this? So if you are actually dealing with a say, let's go through the logic of what the Brysa would have meant, even though we know that that's not what it means. Well, this that you thought originally, before Absimi Barashi, that this was dealing with a say, so what was the whole conversation there in the Brysa? Maybe it does push off. Maybe it doesn't push off. Comes the Pasuk to tell me that it doesn't. Achikamar. Goes like this. What do I do with the Pasuk that says that you're not allowed to violate Shabbos? Anyone that violates Shabbos is put to death. That's Bishar Malachis. And that's only talking about other Malachis. But capital punishment, that's done on Shabbos. Aval Mises Bezd and Dachi Shabbos. Why? Dasi Yasei V'Dachi Loisasei. Mises Bezdin is a positive command. You have to, you have to carry out the capital, the, the punishment. And Shabbos is a negative command. Don't do work on Shabbos. So it's going to push it off. Hader Amar, but then it says, oh, yeah, that's the Hader Amar over here means like the Oyenai, or maybe not. Maybe we say, Eimer Darminan Dasei Dasei Greida. That's only a right, a, a, a Greida means alone. It's only a, um, a strict, um, a plain laissez say, <laughs> exclusive laissez a uh, say that doesn't have any other punishment except malchus. But laissez say bakaris mi the but that it should push off Shabbos. And I say that has karis. Did you ever hear that it a say pushes off uh, such a strong laissez say? So hadarama. Then it says atu a say daichas laissez say laissez say lab laissez say chamer mine. One second. If someone doesn't do a positive command, he neglects doing a, a mitzvah. There's no punishment for that, usually. There were two instances of karis. Yeah, yeah, very good. Mila and uh, Pesa. But in a regular positive command, there's no punishment. But if someone does a negative command, it gets malchus. So the fact that a say does, pushes off a laissez say is always not, it, it's not because the say was stronger than uh, The laissez say is always stronger than it. But nevertheless, it pushes it off. So, what's the difference how strong the Laisa say is? Very strong or a little strong. The say pushes it off.
that's the case, then we have a, a, a logic that capital punishment should be performed on Shabbos. And I need a Pasuk. The Pasuk tells me that it doesn't. You don't do it on Shabbos. Why? Because it says the word in all your dwelling places, which tells me that even though the capital punishment is done in your dwelling places, but you have to not start a fire, not burn a fire on Shabbos in all your dwelling places means even in Bezdin you can't do it. Okay. Now all of this was not the way the Gemara was learning. The Gemara was saying that's a Kavachaymer. So, okay, we, we, uh, we worked out what we were thinking before. Ella, Itzrich. Now, based on that it was all a Kavachaymer, now we need to go back. Why do I need Aleha? Because Aleha by, by Yibam, Yivama Yavay Allah was teaching me that only if there's only one prohibition of not allowed to marry your sister-in-law, comes along the Pasuk and says that if the husband passes away, then you do marry, but not if there's any other prohibition there, not if it's a close relative. That's what we learned from Allah. Problem is, why would I have thought that it would be permissible? It says in the Torah, you're not allowed to marry uh, your, uh, your wife's sister or your daughter, or your, uh, you know. And and, and Sarah also, uh, also. Okay. Ali Istrich. I would have thought that it should be permissible because of another source. So Salka Dait Khamina. I could have thought it's a very important piece of Gemara we're about to learn. Um, we're gonna go through, you know what? Pass me that Siddur. I'm gonna go through two of the um Rabbi Shmal Aimer. Maybe even three. The individual who gathered sticks on Shabbos, can he receive capital punishment on Shabbos? Was that brought on that done on Shabbos? I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. I, just I don't know. Was the um, sure was the Makaisha Shaitim um, killed on Shabbos? No, I think they had to put him into into Mishmar. They had to oh, hold yes, it to see what to do. Okay, so we're gonna look now at. Number eight, we're going to look at that one. We're also going to look at number 11. We're going to look at those two. Yeah. Yeah, without the examples, they, they don't really mean much. Yeah, yeah, but we'll go through the examples. They, it takes on a little meaning. This is like, uh, it's like grammar rules. You know, it doesn't mean that you tell me anything, uh, you know, conjunctions and things and, you know, and not ending a sentence and yeah. preposition. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So where are we holding? Um, oh, okay. So it goes like this. You're not allowed to marry your sister-in-law. Problem is, is that that rule that you can't marry a sister in law was Dabrashay Bechlal. That was in general in all the Arayas. However, it gets removed from the general prohibition of you're not allowed to marry anyone that's a close relative. And it gets removed from that. How does it get removed from that? Yibam. There's a heter. So we say like this. It's not only teaching about itself. It's coming to tell me about everything. That all prohibitions get removed if there's a mitzvah of Yibam. Titania, I'll give you an example. We have a price. We have something that was part of a rule, but it goes out of the rule. Kate said, what's the example? We have a Pasuk that says that a person that's Tame is not allowed to eat from a carbon. Then we have another Pasuk that says, if he does, there's Karis. Then we have another Pasuk that says that anyone that eats from a Shlamim and he has Tuma, he yeah, gets Karis. Another Pasuk telling me, Why do you have to specify that? It's already part of the general rule. So it says, it's coming to do a comparison from Shlamim to everything else. 
when do you get this punishment? When does a person get this punishment? If he's tummy and he eats kachim, that's only if it's like a shlamim. Shlamim is a karban. Kachim is beyach. Afkal kachim is beyach. It's coming to tell me that what the Pasuk said before was not referring to anything that was sanctified, but only if it's sanctified for the altar. Yatsu kachim be kabayas. It's excluding kachim be kabayas. That if it's just sanctified to the house, that means it belongs to the base of Migdash, and someone eats it in his tummy, he doesn't get karis. It's only if it was a karban. So what shlamim does, that teaches the kohen eat it. it teaches, the yeah, shlamim, the kainim eat it, and also the owners eat it. And the, uh, and the owners. So, but that's teaching me about what it, what the other Pasuk said. It's going to teach about all this whole halacha of, of tuma is only for kachim mizbeach. Let's compare this now to Yibam. Hachanami. The, the prohibition to marry a sister-in-law was already there. Why did it go out? It's coming to do a comparison. Just like the Eishazach is mother, the sister-in-law is permissible if the husband passes away. So too, whatever other prohibition would have been there would have been permissible. If I need Aleha to teach me not, Gumar says, me dummy. Is this, is this comparable? It's not similar. The word dummy means similar. In my, uh, in my class in yeshiva, t- teaching them words. So I say, you know, you have a dummy, like a, like a mannequin or something. It's a dummy. It's similar to the... the so just trying. <laughs> okay. Me dummy, is it similar? Hasam. Klal be'iser, uprat be'iser. Over there, it was teaching me prohibitions. It was the same thing. The klal. All kachim cannot be eaten if it's tuma. Shlamin comes to tell me that kachim is be'ach. Hacha, but over here, klal be'iser. All arayas, all close relatives, they're forbidden to marry. Prat beheter, Eishazach is allowed. It's not kol davar shahaya bechlal, the yatsim and aklal alamed. It's not coming to tell me what the prohibition is. It's coming to tell me a leniency. Eishazach is for Eishazach is, no, Eishazach is your brother's wife. Brother's wife? Eishazach, the wife of your brother. That's the, uh, the, the mitzvah of Yibam. Which is permissible to marry if the if the brother passed away without children. It's actually more similar to number eleven in the um, in Rabbi Shmuel's list. It was part of the rule, but it left the rule to teach us something new. You don't bring it back into the rule until the until the Torah brings it back clearly. I'll give you an example for that. Titania, start in a brisa. Until it brings it back specifically because it left the rule. Kate said, what's an example for that? It's talking about the Asham Mitzayra. The Mitzayra, the leper, in his purification process, he has to bring Karbanas. So one of the Karbanas that he brings is an Asham. It says that the, the, the lamb is slaughtered in the place that the chatas is slaughtered and where the oil is slaughtered in the holy place. That means on the north side. Because it's like a chatas, the asham is. This asham is like a chatas. Shein tam alaymik a chatas asham. You don't have to say that it's like a, it's like a chatas, the asham is. Ma tam alaymik a chatas asham. Why do you have to tell, 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 tell that to me? So it explains like this. This, this Asha Mitzayra has a special halacha. It's different than all the other Ashams. There's a few types of Asham. Asham uh, Shifra Harufa, uh, Asham Nazar, there's a few uh, Ashamas. So this one is different. Why? It goes like this. They have to put the oil and the blood on his thumb 
in his right thumb and on his uh, th his toe, as right uh, the thumb right of his toe. So that you don't do by other ones. So there's a special halacha here. So I could have thought, I could have thought that this is different. You told me where the shechit is done on the north side. Good. Now you have to, to, to now you have to take the blood and put it on the put it on his on his thumb, and you have to put the oil on his thumb, and you put the blood on his thumb. So I would have thought that maybe you don't have to put anything on the altar because it was yatza, because it was yatza min aklal. I have a new halacha here. So who's to tell me that it goes back in to be everything else is similar to the Asham? You already, you already removed it from the category of Asham by telling me a, a unique halacha here. So Talmud Lai Marki Kachatas Asham O. Pasuk says, no, it's like an Asham. It's like a Chatas. Ma Chatas Tuna Matan Dam and Veimur Megab Mizbech. Av Asham Tuna Matan Dam and Veimur Megab Mizbech. Just like a Chatas, you have to and as the Torah has to bring it back into the category of the other karbanas that you do have to put the blood on the altar. You do have to put the, the limbs on the, on the altar. If the Pasuk didn't bring it back, I would have thought, this that it, nafak means to go out. This that it went out to teach me, that's what I learned. In other words, whatever it said clearly that it's like a chatas, which means the shechita, yeah, that I would have known. What I didn't go out to learn, I wouldn't have gone out to learn. In other words, this would have been a unique, a, a unique halacha. Right? So, hachanami, let's go back to Yibam. Eishas ach. Havamina, hachanami, havamina. I also would have thought, Eishas ach de ishtarya ishtarai. Sharai is like, I would have said that the only thing that would have been permissible was Eishasach, was the prohibition of marrying a sister-in-law. But nothing else would have gone into that category because it was Yatsa Lidim Bedavar Chadash until the Torah tells me that it goes back into the rule, that it goes back into the category of all other Arayas. I wouldn't have brought it back in. Okay, what does that leave me with? It leaves me with no reason to have a leha. Because, because I wouldn't have, I never would have thought that anything else is permissible. Okay. Because it's, yeah, because it's, uh, it was, it goes out to teach its own halacha and it has its own halacha. El asalka dait chamina teise be mamatzino. Mamatzino goes back to Binyanav. What is Vinyanav? Number number three. Yeah, so we did eight, eleven, and now we go back to number three. I could have thought that I I I learned as a mamatina means a precedent. If you find precedent of how this rule works, then I'll uh, extend it to other cases as well. It goes like this. Mamatina meishazach, maishazach miyabma, afachisisha tisyabim. Just like by Aishazach it's permissible, so too. By a chaisisha. Well, what's the case? Chaisisha is like this. If um, two sisters marry two brothers. So if one of the brothers passes away, so normally if they wouldn't have been sisters, then the other brother would have married the, the he would have done yivam. But because he can't marry his wife's sister, so he doesn't do Yibam. The only thing is, I could have had a mamatzino. One second. You're never allowed to marry your sister-in-law. But nevertheless, if the, the brother passes away, then he is allowed to. So if that's the case, then also if it's his, uh, if it's, his it's another type of sister-in-law. <laughs> right? Two types of sister-in-law. It's his brother's wife and it's his, sis, his wife's sister. Also a sister-in-law. Could have said that it's mutter. Umar says, me dummy, what are you doing over here? Then what did men allow would have been the and then Allah would tell me not. Yeah. So the Gemara says, Me, dummy, is that similar? That's two prohibitions. We only said it's permissible by one. The Gemara says, Could have thought, well, 
once you let it go, you let it go. You know, could have thought that. Gemara says, "I'm not tamer damnin and hayol vishtri yesterday." What's your source that we we say that that once you say it's allowed, you just like let it go? It's okay. It's like grandfathered in. You know, you ignore everything. There's a story. These um, this kid from New York. He goes to visit his family in whatever Baltimore or something. Over there, there's an Arab. They said, "Oh, they can carry this Arab." Anyway, the phone rings. So they hear the kid picking up the phone. I said, what, it's Shabbos. So I said, well, there's an Arab. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> Do you really say this? That, uh, okay. The Tanya, start in a brysa. Okay. You have someone, you see, what happens over here is that you're not allowed to go uh, someone that's impure is not allowed to go into the areas that are holy. There's three areas that are holy. There's the actual temple. That's called Machina Shechina. Then there's the Harabayas. That's called, with the outer courtyard, that's called the Machina Levia. And then there's Machina Yisrael, which is Yerushalayim. Material gets sent out of all of them all three, but he's allowed to come back in as he gets purified. And finally, on his eighth day, he makes his way all the way up to the Machina Shechina, not going inside the Machina Shechina, but he puts his thumbs in to the, through, the, through the doorway of the Shar Nikonar to be able to get the, um, the oil and the blood placed on his thumbs, even though he didn't bring his carbon. Oh, perfect. So he, get, he goes up to the gate. Yes, it's a picture base of the uh, base of that she goes up to the courtyard gate the inner courtyard gate um and he's able to put his thumbs in now that's a special leniency because he's putting his thumbs in according to one opinion there's different ways of looking at partial entry it's called via bimichas partial entry partial entry means that you're entered or partial entry means you didn't enter ula holds we'll see ula holds partial entry is considered that you entered but nevertheless a special exemption we allow entry of his thumbs because the, the Torah permits it. Okay. But how is he even able to have partial entry if he can't even go into the shrine? Oh, because he already started the process uh -huh. of his purification. He's already on his eighth day. He's just missing one thing. He's missing his sacrifice. He already uh -huh. uh, did the, um, uh -huh. uh, the mikvah and the whatever. Okay. The only problem is, is that it comes on him a new problem. Yeah, when it rains, it pours. So now he becomes a carry on the eighth day. He's permitted to go up there, and now he get, becomes a carry. And a carry is not allowed to be in the Machna Levia. It's not allowed to even be in the Harabayas. So it says like this, Vitaval, but he went to the mikvah. So now he's only a Tful Yaim. A Tful Yaim, we'll see, is he allowed to be on the Harabayas? Is it a Darais? Is it, is it a Darabanan? Whatever the case is, it's Erev Pesach. If he is able to bring his sacrifice right now, he'll be able to eat it tonight by sundown because by, by, by nightfall, rather, three stars, by nightfall, he becomes totally pure. The oh. Arab Shemesh. You just have to get him in. So, Amr Chachamim, Afapishain Tvul Yaim, Acha Nichnas, even though regularly a Tvul Yaim, someone that went to the mikvah already, is not allowed to enter. Zen Nichnas, this person can go in. Mutav Shiava Yasei Sheish Bekaris, Vidcha Seishain Bekaris. Look. There's a, there's a mitzvah to bring the carbon Pesach. Let's push off the Asei She'im Bakaris. You should send out Asei She'im Bakaris. Send out of the camp anyone that's not pure, anyone that's tummy, send out of the camp. That's Asei She'im Bakaris. And the Asei She'yesh Bakaris is the carbon Pesach. You don't bring, right? That was one of the positive commands I just got. Rabbi Yechanan says, it's not even an Asei. He's really allowed to be there anyway. It's only rabbinic law. Yeshafa purified everyone. Um, and they stood in the, in the new courtyard. What is the new courtyard? They made new halachas now. It was all a rabbinic law. That a tvul yam, someone who went to the mikvah, can't come into Machin I know this biblically, he should be allowed to be there. The rabbi said that he's not. In this case, we allow him to be there. 
And Ula says, not only do we allow him to be there, we allow him to put his 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 thumbs inside. Matam, what's the reason? Once he had already this special pass, this exemption, that he's allowed to get his thumbs inside the Sharnikanar, so we allow it also for the carry. We have an answer. We could have thought, once we allow that you can't marry a sister-in-law, we permit that. So even so now if there's another prohibition, we'll permit that as well. So once it's allowed, it's allowed. Umar says, Mi dami ula. Is this comparable to Ula? So they, what time is Shachas? I don't wanna. So they start on what? I, I, yeah, I have time. Can I do another few lines? Okay. Tena, I just don't wanna, if we leave in the middle, I'll have to uh, think again tomorrow, which I don't wanna do. Tena. <laughs> <laughs> We have to set up this properly. What's happening over here? You see, by the case of Ula, he got his, he got his pass to be able to go inside. Why? Because it was the eighth day and it was his taras. He was just about done. And he gets the, they hand him the pass. You know, you can get, then he becomes a carry. So don't worry, you'll have the pass already. You're good. You can put your thumbs in. So let's compare that to, to Eshesach. When does the prohibition come on? In other words, something's gonna be permissible here, and then there's something that's gonna be prohibited and we'll allow it because it was already permiss- permitted. So let's say the deceased brother, say Reuven, all right? Reuven and Shimon, they both marry uh, Rachel and Leia, I don't know what the examples are. So um, Reuven, let's say, marries Leia. Shimon marries Rachel. Reuven marries Leia, Shimon marries Rachel, the older one. So um, Reuven marries Rachel first. I'm sorry, Reuven marries Leia first. And then Shimon marries Rachel. The Migu Dishtri Eshesach, the first prohibition becomes permissible. Eshesach, that becomes permissible. He never had, see, Shimon wasn't married yet when the first prohibition came on. And that first prohibition, Goes off. By if there was a if there's if yeah, there's it even. Up, right. right. So the 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 prohibition of Aisha which Shimon becomes permissible, was there before Shimon even got married. So over there we'll say Ishrinami Isra Then we'll say that because that was the first prohibition that becomes permissible. So we'll give him the pass also even for the second one. Israel. Even though the second this came later, similar to the carry that came right. later. But let's say Shimon marries Rachel first. first. So he's never allowed to marry uh, Leah. He's never allowed to marry Leah. And then Reuven marries Leah. So that prohibition never, never goes off. He's going to have a pass. That was the main prohibition. And even if Reuven marries Leah first, this would all work if, let's say, the pass already came. He already gets the, the heter. Why? Because Reuven passes away, and Shimon isn't even married yet. And now Shimon decides to marry, uh, which is no problem. It was like, he's allowed to marry whoever he wants. It, uh, uh, Leah can't get married until she does Yiba Mar Chalitza. But this is a brother. He can marry a few wives. So he went and he married uh, Rachel. But the Chazila, the Beni Beni, the Heter was already there. So we'd say he already had a Heter to marry Leah. Now the prohibition comes on. He was already mutter to marry Leah. Ella, Nasa Meis, Veloi Meis. But let's say Reuven marries Leah. And Reuven's still alive. Vachach Nasa Chai. Now Shimon, Chai means Shimon marries Rachel. Leah Chazile Klal. He was never permitted to. To, to Leah. Right. Milo Maidi Ula Shimra Kari Balel Shmini Shane Machnis Yadav Labahinish Layotza Bishashi Hiruya Lahavi Bakarban. Goes like this. Let's say the Mitsaira never got his pass to put the to, to, to put his um, thumbs in. Why? Because before the eighth day came, he was already Tame as a carry. 
So he never got that uh, uh, exemption to be able to go in. When does Zula allow it? Once the exemption came and he was raw, carry on, be, on, the the on the eighth day. But if it was before the eighth day, he never got the exemption. Ella, so the Gemara now answers, you know what? It's not a problem. You know what? I don't need a law to tell me every single case. I only need a law to tell me one case. You know which case a law is teaching me? Where it's prohibited to marry a close relative? It's the case where Ruvain marries, Shimon marries, uh, Ruvain marries Leah. Shimon doesn't get married. Ruvain passes away. There's a heter for Shimon to marry, marry Leah. Then Shimon, instead of marrying Leah, marries Rachel. But that heter is already there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using names. Oh, I'm sorry. using names. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I could have said Sprinza and, uh, and whatever. <laughs> so, then, so then we would say that if not for Allah, I would have said that it's permissible. Okay, let's leave it right there. That's for you. Have a good day. I, I, I ended off by the by Yusayma. It's um yeah, it's 12 lines down. Uh, very good. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Good day.